This is rental car number 66, and today I'm driving the 2018 Chevy Impala LT. I know last week I said that my next review was going to be the 2017 Dodge Journey, but I got the 2018 Impala yesterday, and I'm so excited to drive it because, well, there's a lot of rumors out there that this might be one of the last years we see the Impala. Chevy is honestly talking about getting rid of this car completely. And I love this car, so I just couldn't postpone reviewing it for a couple more weeks. So the Chevy Impala is a four-door full-size sedan that seats five adults pretty comfortably. The LT retails for about $32,000. And this one came with a V6 engine, which is an additional $1,000. So if you want to get the base model, you could probably get something for around $28,000. But let's talk about that V6 engine because it's pretty nice. So let's pop open the hood and take a look. So this is a six-speed automatic. It's a 3.6 liter V6 engine that kicks out 305 horsepower at 6,800 RPMs. I think it's kind of pretty looking, especially with that nice Chevy logo right on top of the V6. It's not bad on fuel economy too. Just a quick note, the gas cap is on the passenger side. Don't know if you like or dislike that. But you do get 18 miles per gallon in the city and 28 on the highway with an 18.5 gallon fuel tank. So that'll get you somewhere around 550 to 600 miles. Not too bad. Performance wise, I was really pleased with the V6. It accelerates really smoothly, I can keep up with traffic, and I had no problems accelerating onto the interstate. That's all I can really say. I'm just a normal guy driving these cars on normal roads. I don't take it out on the track or anything, so I can't speak to 0 to 60 speeds or anything like that. Handling was also nice. It feels really strong through curves. I didn't feel like the car was pulling at all, and I felt really confident when I was you know, passing cars in traffic and going around tight interstate sort of exit ramps. My only complaint about driving this car is the visibility out the back window. It's really not good. The trunk space is so large, and we'll get to that in a second, that the trunk comes way up and your rear window is, well, it's kind of narrow, so it is difficult to see out of that back window. You do get a rear view camera, so that helps tremendously, but I'm kind of uncomfortable with the lack of visibility with the Impala. All right, so that's my quick little take on performance, but uh, let's jump inside the vehicle and take a look. Before we do that, though, I just want to mention that you do get the keyless entry buttons. These are the buttons that you can press if you have the key fob in your pocket to unlock the car. Well, they're on every single door, which is the first I've seen yet, and it's actually really nice. And that means you can walk up to any door, press this little silver button right here once, and it'll unlock the car as long as you have that key fob in your pocket. Up inside, you'll see that this car has a black leather interior, which I think is pretty well done. All right, so here's that key fob I keep talking about. Five buttons on the front, nothing on the back with the Chevy logo. And you do get a flip-out key just in case it malfunctions so you can enter the vehicle. Uh, because this is a fob, you do get a push-button start. It's located right here to the right of the steering wheel. Just give it a quick push, and the vehicle will start up for you. And since we're talking about that push button start, I want to point out that the hazard lights are located right here in this small little button. I don't know, it's kind of a weird spot for this. Typically it's in the center of the center console, so I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. But getting back to basics, here's the steering wheel. On the left hand side you have your cruise controls. These buttons feel actually pretty nice in the hand. On the right hand side you have buttons to activate your phone along with uh, some additional buttons to interact with the entertainment features. Mostly that means you're interacting with this screen right here in the middle of the gauge cluster. I actually like this. I like the blue accents on the gauges. And this screen is actually a pretty decent size. It has pretty bright crisp colors. And I was really happy to see that there's a lot of menus that you can navigate through to get all kinds of information about the vehicle while you're driving. And then shifting your gaze to the left of the steering wheel, you get all your standard buttons here. Window controls, door locks, mirror controls. Your parking brake is actually located right there, kind of a strange spot. You get your dimmer button to control the uh, lights in the gauge cluster, and then you get your trunk release, and then an additional star, small, I should say, storage space right here. And then the side view mirrors are pretty standard size, nothing special here, no blindside detection, and no additional cutout in the upper 
left hand and right hand corners to give you a wider view of the road. This is something that I've seen Toyota and Ford doing a lot, so I kind of hope that Chevy catches up and does the same. All right, but enough of my complaining. Let's talk about this center console because it's actually really nice and I think you're going to be impressed with all the great features. First off, this touchscreen is very large. The colors are very nice. It's very responsive and it's structured in a way where you can find pretty much everything in the menu structure within one or two clicks at most. I was also able to connect my phone via Bluetooth within under a minute, which is, uh, well, it's exceptional. And then you get this added feature. Push this button right here. Screen slides up, and then you have a nice storage space right in here to keep a couple items. I don't know if this is really useful, but it certainly is pretty fun to play with. And uh, just in case you didn't notice, there's actually a USB port right inside for you. And below the touchscreen, you get some dedicated buttons for your volume controls, that button to open the screen, and then additional buttons to jump straight to any of those basic features that you're going to use most, like the radio and using uh, Bluetooth on your phone. That's that media button you see right there. And then a little bit further below there, you get your climate controls. I'm super happy with these. I love that there are digital readouts to tell you what temperature the car is set at, along with big buttons for all the important features like where the vent is blowing, AC controls, fan control right there in the center. Everything is really responsive and easy to use. At the base of the center console, you get a small storage area with a DC power port right here. I have to be honest, this feels like a quick redesign of an ashtray. I think it could have been done a little bit better, especially since my cell phone really doesn't fit here without having to push it sideways. But nevertheless, it's still nice to have a little bit of storage right here. And behind that storage space, you get your gear shift. This feels really nice. No complaints here. It's made out of solid materials. So you get a leather wrap on it. Looks good. Get two nice sized cup holders right here. And then right behind there, you get this little cutout, which is a nice place to store your cell phone along with your traction control button right there. And then the center armrest also opens up. So you do have some additional storage right here with a removable tray. And then down in that storage area, you do get two USB ports and an additional um, DC power port on the left-hand side. So all in all, this area is not, not the best I've ever seen, but it certainly is usable space. And I think the same is true with the glove box. It's, uh, it's a little bit small. Here's the uh, owner's manual for the 2018 Impala. If you'll notice, it's hard for me to get just this basic stuff. I mean, I really have the owner's manual and a couple other odds and ends. I can't even get the glove box to, to close when I have all this stuff in there. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that the glove box, it's a little small, but uh, you'll probably end up getting all the stuff you want to keep in there, in there eventually. And then shifting your gaze upward, I'm shocked to see that the Impala does not have a sunglass holder. It seems like every car I've been driving lately has one of those. But you do get a couple of nice features up here. First off, the rear view mirror does not have any buttons on it, which is kind of a rarity nowadays. They have moved those buttons up, located right here. So you get your OnStar button, your panic button, all that stuff right here, along with two nice LED lights to illuminate the cabin and then your buttons to control whether or not the lights turn on when you open and close the doors. All right, so that's basically all the important stuff in the front seat. Let's jump in the back seat and take a look at what kind of amenities your passengers are going to have access to. First off, legroom back here is fantastic. I'm about six feet tall, and I still had, I don't know, eight, 12 inches of legroom back here, and that's with that driver's seat pushed back fairly far. Um, you don't get any USB ports back here, but you do get two dedicated vents for your passengers. You see that right here along with a nice shelf. And then I didn't take a great shot of it, but way down below, you do get a DC power port all the way towards the floor. Your passengers also get a center armrest that folds down just like this with two cup holders. This feels really solid. Sometimes these feel kind of hollow and cheap, but uh, Chevy has done a nice job with this. My only complaint back here really is the car seat anchors. They're buried pretty deep. I'd say maybe an inch or two. So connecting a car seat back here is going to be, it's going to be a huge pain in the butt, which is no fun. But as a consolation, these seats do fold down pretty easily. You just pull up on these little levers right here, and the seats collapse down um, without almost any effort at all. It's really quite easy to do. 
and they fold really flat so I think you'll be able to get a lot of stuff back here if you need to. And speaking of storing some stuff, let's take a look at the trunk because that's one of the, I'd say, best features of the Impala. And I'm not saying that lightly, but the trunk space back here is enormous. I'm confident in saying it is probably the largest in the class. You just get a ton of space back here, and it's nice to see that the wheel wells don't infringe on that space. So you get a really nice size, sort of rectangular shape, so you can cram all kinds of stuff back here. And then as an added bonus, the floor does lift up pretty easily to reveal a small storage space right here. And then, not to beat this into the ground, but when you fold those rear seats down, you do have an enormous, and I mean an enormous amount of storage room back here, especially when you consider this is just a sedan. All right, so that's pretty much everything I have to say about the Chevy Impala end to end. Drove this car for over three days. I put, I'd say, 350 to 400 miles on it. And after all that time, I think I'm going to give the 2018 Chevy Impala LT four stars. I am super happy with the 2018 Impala. Just can't give it five stars because of that lack of visibility out the rear window. But for $30,000, $32,000 ish, I think you're getting one hell of a sedan. And if you can, I highly recommend that you take this one out for a test drive or rent it for yourself. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 67th rental car. I'll see you then.